Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a hierarchical multiple regression in SPSS. A hierarchical multiple regression is similar to a multiple linear regression in that we have two or more independent variables or predictor variables and we want to determine how much variance they explain in a single continuous dependent variable. The added component of a hierarchical multiple regression as compared to a multiple linear regression is that in HMR you can control for a predictor variable. It's similar to an ANCOVA analysis of covariance where you have the independent variables of interest and then you have a covariate and you're concerned that covariate is explaining the differences on a dependent variable and you want to, to determine what the differences are on your independent variables while controlling for that covariate. Well, an HMR is using the same concept except in regression. So looking at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, you can see I have a depression score variable, an anxiety score variable, and these are going to be my two predictor variables. And let's assume this family support variable, this indicates obstacles to family support. So a higher value here would indicate lower family support because it would indicate more obstacles. And then we have a general symptom scale. And again, a higher value here would represent more mental health symptoms. So we want to see how much variance in the symptoms variable is accounted for by depression and anxiety scores, but we want to control for the family support obstacles variable because we know that when there are obstacles to family support, that's probably going to cause an increase in symptoms. So for this analysis, an HMR would be appropriate. We have two predictor variables. We have one variable that we want to control for, and we have one dependent variable. The assumptions for hierarchical multiple regression are the same as they are for a multiple linear regression. You want to have 20 cases for each predictor variable. In this sample, I have 100. You want your dependent variable to be normally distributed. So to check for that, I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And the dependent variable here is Symptoms. So I'm going to move Symptoms over to the dependent list under Plots. I'm going to check off Histogram and Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue and then click OK. And I'm looking for a non-statistically significant p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk, and I have that, 0.516. So we're going to assume that the dependent variable is normally distributed based on this result. We also want to make sure we don't have outliers, and we'll check for that as part of the multiple linear regression procedure. Now, in this case, of course, we're running a hierarchical multiple regression but other than one step where we uh, load blocks with different variables, the procedure is identical to a multiple linear regression. We're going to check for a linear relationship between the predictor variables and the dependent variable, and we're going to check to make sure that the predictors are not multicollinear. So to begin the HMR, we'll go to Analyze, Regression, and Linear. And as you can see, this is the same linear regression dialog that you would use for a simple linear regression. That's one predictor variable. A multiple linear regression, which is two or more predictor variables, or a hierarchical multiple regression. So we'll put symptoms in the dependent variable box. And we're going to use two blocks. You can see here it says block one of one. We're going to create two blocks here. And in the first block, in block one of one, as it's labeled now, we're going to want to put the predictor that we want to control for. So in this case, it was the family support obstacles. And you can see when I drop that in, 
the Next button becomes available. I click Next, and now I have a block two of two option. And in this block, I'm going to put the predictor variables of interest, which are depression and anxiety. So we have now block one of two, and that has the family support obstacles, and then block two of two, which has the depression and anxiety scores. Under statistics, I'm going to check off our squared change, descriptives, part and partial correlations, and collinearity diagnostics, as well as case-wise diagnostics. Estimates is checked off by default, and I'm going to leave it checked off. Click Continue. Under Plots, the ZRESID goes in the y-axis, and the ZPRED goes in the x-axis. We're also going to check off Normal Probability Plot and click Continue. Under Save, the only change I'm going to make here to the default is to check off Cook's Distance and click Continue. Under Options, I'm making no changes. So at this point, we're ready to conduct the hierarchical multiple regression. Click OK. And you can see it starts with the descriptive statistics table. And you can see the mean and standard deviation values for all four variables. Using the correlations table, we can check for multicollinearity between the predictors. So we're looking for any value here that's greater than 0.7 between the predictors. That wouldn't be the symptoms variable. That would be the other three. And we can see that none of these values are above 0.7. We also want to make sure that the predictors correlate with the outcome greater than 0.3. Looking at symptoms, here we can see family support. That's above 0.3. Depression is above 0.3. And anxiety is above 0.3. Then I'm going to move down. I'll come back to Model Summary. I'm going to move down to Residual Statistics. And at Cook's Distance, at this row, we want to make sure that the maximum is not above 1. This is at 0.168, so we're good there. And we want to make sure the minimum and maximum values for the standard residual are within negative 3 to 3. So here we're good, we're at negative 2.9 and 1.9. Moving down to the charts, for the normal probability probability plot, we want uh, these points to be as close to the line as possible. And we do have some deviations here, but generally these points do follow the line. And moving down to the scatter plot, we want all these values to be both on the x-axis and the y-axis between negative 3 and 3, and all the points are. So we're good there. Moving back up uh, the output page, and taking a look at the collinearity statistics, uh, the tolerance, we want the tolerance to be greater than 0.1, and it is. And we want the variance inflation factor, this value here, to be less than 10, and all those values are less than 10. So then moving up the output back to the model summary. In the model summary, we can interpret the results of the hierarchical multiple regression. And we can see that we're given two models, models 1 and 2. And we have an R and an R square value. So if we look at model 2, if we look at this R-square value, this is saying that 47.7% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by our predictor variables. Now that's saying it's explained by all the predictor variables, including the family support obstacles variable, including the variable that we want to control for. The value of R square change that takes into account our two variables with the family support obstacles variable controlled is here under change statistics R square change. 
So you can see that the R squared change for model two is 36%. So when controlling for the family support obstacles variable, 36% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the depression and anxiety variables. Also note here that we have a significant value for both model one and two. And looking at model one and two in the ANOVA, we have a statistically significant p-value for both of these models. This ANOVA tests the null hypothesis that the slope of the line is zero. So we want uh, these values to be statistically significant. So again, to review the output of this hierarchical multiple regression, using all the variables, 47.7% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variables. And when controlling for the family support obstacles variable, 36% of the variance in the dependent variable symptoms is explained by the depression and anxiety scores. I hope you found this video on conducting a hierarchical multiple regression to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.